All right, thank you, Harvey. I will uh, attempt to share my screen here. I'm using a new computer, so everything is a little bit. How many did you get in? Hit or miss. Um, six. Okay, I'll I'll do some sharing on my screen at my end after. All right. Yeah. So, is it showing the correct screen? Can you see yep. uh, these? Yep. Papers? All right. Yep. Cool. Um, Alex, you're up first by alphabet and reputation. Um, so um, go ahead. I, I, and I, I a disclaimer to everybody who sent in pictures. I, if you, no matter what pit order you tried to email them to me, this sorts it alphabetically. So it might be all completely out of order and we'll have to wing well, it. Well, they should be all numbered in, in order. So that's not, that's not the correct uh, order. One hopes so, but, yeah. um, <clears throat> let's see. I, is it roughly? No, um. No, because the Jaguar uh, box art is the first one. Dude, I don't even know. Uh, the sixth one in is the first one. Oh. I wonder how I can change that sorting order. You yeah. know what? Oh, sort by. It says uh, new, there it is. Yeah, sort by. Uh, yeah. Oh, no. That's all I got. Newest oh, you only have okay. Holy crap. This is a terrible about program. I don't know. I don't know program. why. Yeah, this is why I don't usually use okay. it. Okay, that's the stupidest thing. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's just do it right there. Way. Yeah, that's the order. That's the order right there. This is the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to uh, break the rules. Oh, cool. All right, let's try this. Okay, so this is a, a mm -hmm. online uh, group project. I, I chose a Jaguar XJR Le Mans Silka Jaguar. Next photograph. And so while doing research and looking at references, I noticed that in the red box, this electrical box is incorrect on the kit. Uh, next one. And so that's what it looks like in the kit. So I figured, okay, this is a good chance for me to try a different method of photo etching. Uh, next. So here's a comparison. Oh, oh, sorry. sorry, yeah, yeah. Can yeah, here's a comparison of what, what's in the box and, and uh, what's, uh, what real card is. Next. So I decided to itch a five thou brass sheet. Uh, next. And so I did uh, the artwork in AutoCAD um, next. And at the same time, I was working on another project. So I did more artwork for this in Corel Draw for um, this uh, fancy frame thing. Um, mm. Just so I had two, two, two projects. So not just one project to do, to do it, I had two next. And so I used my silhouette cutter to um, cut the vinyl um, masks for the etching. So this is the the vinyl that's been uh, stuck to the brass sheet with the parts picked out. So whatever exposed in brass is gonna be etched. Um, and I use, for certain parts I didn't want to etch, so I used um, the packing tape to tape those areas that I didn't want to etch, like the back side. Next. Okay. So here's the, oh, that's a missing picture, but okay, well. Mm -hmm. um, that's a stand that's in the etching kit um, and the, is what the, um, the, and the brass sheet's on the bottom. Next. And here is it just sit inside these grooves in there and uh, the tube that's in there is a uh, provides air source and it just bubbles up through the etchant to, to circulate the etchant. Next. Mm. So yeah, that's the kit that I had um, purchased from an uh, electronic store that was going out of business. So it comes with like a little air supply, the hose, the stand and the container. And uh, I did in the past actually purchase these items from like various supplies. So it, it was much cheaper that way. Mm. Right? The bin you can get from like dollar store. Um, sorry, this is uh, just a uh, etching in process before the bubbles come up. Next. And that's partial, partially etching. I noticed that it's etching the bottom part instead of the whole thing at once. So I just flipped it over halfway through. Next. And that's the etch. This is the back side with the masking, uh, the packing tape, because I didn't need to etch both sides. So, all right. Next. And that's a close up of the parts that I needed. Next. And there it is removed from the cool. packing tape. Mm -hmm. Next. And there's me trying to fold it. I tried to scribe it and then bend it so that it would bend more cleanly, but you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it didn't. Next. Mm -hmm. And then I tried to blacken it. Uh, I tried to blacken it uh, chemicals. It didn't work properly because it flaked off. So eventually I just use a Sharpie. Next. And a close up, next. And there's uh, the kit part. I had to cut off the kit part and cut off uh, the aluminum at the same time, I'm going to replace later on. Next. Are you, are you doing two of these at once? Yes. Okay. So close up, next. <clears throat> and the uh, aluminum pole on the part removed, next. And that's the finished item, and next. And that's another view. And that's, nice. that's it. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. How much did that kit cost you, Alex? 
Um, I, I bought them years and years ago, and they were like 30, 30 bucks or something like that. Now I have no idea, maybe 70 or maybe up to $100 on eBay because they they're, haven't been reissued in a while. Mm. They're actually hard to find because I was trying to get one a couple months ago. Mm. Maybe Microwork sells them. They sell everything. Anyways. Mm. All right. Next up, um, we have Bill. Said he might not make it on time. Bill, Bill, Bill who? Eric? <laughs> oh, I knew you were going to ask me a trick question. Bill Campbell? Like not Bill Campbell. Uh, yeah, Bill, Bill Campbell. Yeah, Bill Campbell. Yeah, that's his car. Yeah, Bill, are you there? No, he does not appear to be. Maybe we uh, save him for uh, next time. That's not a bad idea. You know yeah. what? I'll put those away. Yeah, because he's... Oh, or if he joins later, maybe. He'll yeah, yeah, there. yeah. All right. Brian, then. All right. Let's go. How's it going? Okay. So um, I decided to build <laughs> I picked that as the first um, image. I knew you'd hey, like that this one. Is, this is a family <laughs> Zoom meeting family here. Show. Family yeah. show here, man. Okay. I, I won't tell you what the guy in the movie said <laughs> when it was happening. But uh, this is from The Beast of War or The Beast. That's a uh, 1980 movie. Uh, pretty cult classic film. And I built the tank from this. Um, tank is fairly distinctive in design if you know what you're looking at and so I just decided to do my best rendition of this very few people seem to have done this subject uh, which is weird because so many tank models and you know so many people out there building model stuff so okay I decided to do this um, so there's you know first photo there from the front um, and uh, this took several weeks or more work to get done but uh, I, you know, I've had worse results frankly uh, I started with the Tamiya Turan 5 kit and then I added a ton of aftermarket and still had to do some scratch building, whatever. You see that machine gun on top is fairly distinctive oh. film. Um, so I did whatever I could to replicate the actual props from the movie. Uh, I did a lot of changes to the kits itself. Um, the tank itself went through various renditions as a physical object in the world. So it started off as a T-55, then became an Egyptian tank. Then it was captured by the Israelis. They turned that into a Turan-5 wow. with various NATO weapons and stuff. <clears throat> and then finally, a movie company got their hands on it to make a movie with. And they're like, no, no, we want a more Soviet. So they changed a bunch of stuff around on the tank. So it's a distinctive singular thing in the world that existed for probably six months that they made the movie. And so, you know, I've done my best to replicate this. Um, let's see. Next, next, next. Oh, film. Brian, what is, what is Rad Bat Miniatures? Is that your moniker? Or what That's is just, it? just a moniker I threw okay. on there. I, I saw some people did some really nice uh, Photoshop with their images. Oh, okay. I just threw the thing into the uh, the photo booth, the cheap dollar store. That's photo cool. Booth yeah, it works, man. Yeah, it, it's clear. It looks a little nicer, right? You know? Um, so let's see. Um, the side view of the model. All right. So this is my first time using metal tracks. I got those fruity model tracks um expensive very time consuming and hard work but you do get excellent results from it uh no complaints there from me um let's see uh you get, yeah you get reliable results out of that um the weathering was a combination of ak pencils panel liners uh and tons of pigments and layers because in the movie that is somebody making noise okay. somebody's making a ton of noise oh that's lorenzo he's rooting oh, around sorry 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 okay. sorry no all right so in the movie, the, the tank is covered with tons of dust. So I just literally did that with pigments. Nice. And that seemed to work out pretty well. Layers and layers of that. Um, I like your groundwork. I like your groundwork. Thank hmm. you. I, the shape for that, um, I looked at movie posters from the 80s. Of, there's a bunch of tank films. And they, the shape of the, the tank background is always blasting outwards. So I tried yeah. a couple of different shapes with uh, the foam cutting table. Mm -hmm. I just decided that I like this particular shape. It works well. It also slopes upwards slightly. Nice. Yeah. towards the little cliff there and uh, in the film there's a moment where the tank gets to a cliff and that's kind of pivotal so i thought that's pretty good i like um, i like the variation you got there many different colors happening this, this yeah thing. I, I, that's interesting i kind of dislike that because it didn't match the movie but no it that's good great enough it's great. okay cool um next next slide please all right so here's the machine gun from the film and that's a weird combination. It's actually in the film, it was a Browning M2, an American machine gun, and they oh. gussied it up to make it look like a, a Soviet Dushk or whatever they call that machine gun. And then they stuck this weird gigantic anti-aircraft sight on top of it. Holy crap. I had to get the one. Yeah, I, it looks kind of cool. But I didn't you know, know I that. Buy, yeah. So now that you mentioned it, yeah, it's a Browning. 
Mm -hmm. It's a Browning uh, receiver with the box and everything, but they, they screwed it. They did a bunch of weird stuff with the, the, the barrel and everything. So I had to get a uh, Joshka, very hard to find. I had to get one of those 3D printed. And then as a separate part for about another 20 bucks, I had to get that single tiny photo watch part for the Andy aircraft site. Oh. Um, next, yeah, next slide, please. Oh, by the way, guys, what is, go back to that last slide. Well, guys, what is that helicopter in the back? What is it? It's a French chopper. I, I remember looking that up. Oh, uh, okay. If, if you see a movie and you see a Soviet helicopter, it's, yeah. it's probably French. Yeah, because, because that's Americans, right. Yeah, it's a super was, free long. <clears throat> It's a what? Super free long. Super free long. Yeah. Oh, nice. Thank you. Because because that was right at the height of the Cold War, right in the mid eighties. Yeah. So where they yeah. would get that? Yeah, I know. Yeah. So like I, I, I said, it's, yeah, that's if nice. If you see a Soviet chopper in a film in the eighties, it's probably French. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Didn't uh, they so have I, a hind a hind in the movie also? Uh, there yeah. wasn't a hind in the movie, right? There was. Yeah, but no, it could be disguised again, right? Where would they get it? But the anyway. only chopper in the film was that chopper you saw just now. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so I used photo apps uh, for the intake screens, and that went surprisingly well. Um, the antenna that come with the kit, uh, they pretty much appear, as you see, they're little stubby things. And I've seen most of the people who build this kit, they build it with just in little stubby antennas. So I assume they're either retractable or they're just acceptable to build that way. Um, I got some music wire to do them longer, but I haven't done anything with that. Um, let's see. Next, next slide. Okay. Yeah, so that's a close-up there. Um, next slide. All right. Um, so the base is my second attempt to get the shape that I wanted. Uh, I mentioned that already. Uh, and the whole thing is basically a work in progress because I have some little things I'm going to put on the base in that area that will represent things from the film and so forth. Although maybe this would go to Rochester on Sunday. I don't know. I don't think I've got all this stuff in yet. So yeah. Um, let's see. Next, next slide. Yeah. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, so the base uh, angles upwards, <clears throat> I mentioned that. Next slide. And there's the actual shape of the base. You can see that a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I really like the uh, the ground effects, the crackle in the, mm -hmm. in the earth. You yeah, can't really see it uh, for some reason, it's cut off from the bottom, but yeah. Cool. But essentially, yeah. Brian, that's a T-55, right? It was, yeah. So in real life, the tank started off T-55, became a Turan 5 in Israel, and they modified and everything. Ah, uh, okay. Enough okay. that it looked different. Right? right, and then I had to do a bunch of changes right, and parts right, and stuff right, like that. Right, right, but uh, it's it's fundamentally is a T fifty five. Yeah, very nice. Right. Right. Next, we have uh, Lorenzo. Hello. Oh, I know what that is. What? I oh yeah, that that's a Spitfire. <laughs> <laughs> it's a T fifty five. Well, that's my attempt at uh, General Romer's Mustang. Oh, that's looking great. Yeah, that's looking great. Oh, yeah. yeah, the jagged stripes. That's looking. Yeah, great. you know, you know, I did that. I yeah. uh, with Tamiya tape. Yeah, just tore it, you know, and just yeah, it up. yeah it looks that's great. I think I'm gonna do that with all of them from now on. Mm. It's quite the it's quite yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. They're all she's all glossed up, ready for markings. And, that's uh, great. Yeah, use the. Uh, what did I use? Oh, the paints are the uh, the Gunsy lockers. Mm. Yeah, so uh, came out and uh, using the uh, Ultracast conversion for the for the nose guns and and the, and the uh, wing guns. That's hard to get now. Uh, the Ultracast. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, that set for that set, it's hard. Oh, to get. well, I got an extra one if you need it. No, I'm got <laughs> <laughs> I'm rovered aircraft out right you now. Know, <laughs> <laughs> I just got to figure out how dirty I want it now. Ah, yeah, I, got, uh, I got a question. That, yeah. that base you got there, the clear plastic base and the three arms? Yes. What is that and where did you get that? I've seen that. I got that from a place down in Texas. I think I've got it bookmarked uh, in my you know, on my computer, but I got those a long time ago. Yeah. And really, I've got about two or three of them and they really come in handy. Are they specialized for model building? Or are they a different? No, they, I guess you could use it for pretty well anything. Like if you want to display. Okay, but are they like are they focused? I'm just wondering what to look for, really. Um, that's a good question. I, I wish I remember the name of the place where I got them from. Um, I Airfix has a set of those. Yeah, I wish yeah. I'd have got more because they're really they're quite handy. Yeah. 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 And uh, what else about it? Um, yep, oh, there nice. she is. Oh, nice. Got to be a Phantom. Be, what, what scale is that one? That'd be 48, the Hasegawa. 
Mm -hmm. What I did is I, because all of Hasegawa's F4Cs and Ds are all like uh, raised panel lines. Mm -hmm. so what, I did, what I did with this is I took the uh, fuselage from an F4J and the wings from an F4E, a hard wing, and I put oh. them together to right. make a, an F4C with scribe lines. I put a Aries cockpit in it, and uh, nice. yeah, so that's going to be that's part of. I don't, have you ever heard of Pardo's push? No. Anyway, well, it was uh, during Vietnam. Uh, mm -hmm. they, uh, they had bombed a uh, steel mill up in North Vietnam. I can't remember where, but I think it was outside of Hanoi. Mm. And uh, on the way on the way out, um, his wingman got uh, pretty dinged up, and he was losing fuel, and uh, they were probably going to have to bail out. So what his idea was was um, for for him to lower his uh, tail his tail hook. Yeah. And then he came up behind him, and he put it right on the front of his of his screen, and kind of like pushed them far enough so they could bail out over over the ocean, and uh, they were rescued. Yeah. Jesus. So, yeah, and actually, he got, he got he got in shit for that. He got okay. in trouble, for that. and then they figured, well, he did a good thing. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Figure that one out. Now you get you know there's that what is that the new movie Devotion coming out? You'll yeah, well, definitely yes, yes. Hmm. Good, it's like another one to watch to go see. Yeah, nice. You like you like Vietnam stuff, don't you? Uh well, hey, you know we I, I, we grew up during that era, right? And this is what we saw: Phantoms, F one hundreds, Sky Raiders, the whole ball of wax, right? So, yeah. so what do you what do you call a Vietnam War hero with a new apartment? <laughs> uh, new new tenant Dan. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, somebody, somebody please mute me. All right. <laughs> yeah, I, I can actually just kick you out. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I like having the power. Okay, thank you, Lorenzo. Uh, Ming, you're up next. Ming, all right. Oh, okay, all right. So, um, hmm. where do you want me to start? Yeah, this one's. So let's start with the rightmost on the top row, the rightmost uh, picture. Okay, we'll yeah. keep coming, jumping back and forth here. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, cool. nice. So this is a one thirty fifth scale um, German wartime uh, postal truck. No. Huh. So um, I didn't know that this kind of thing exists ex and until I saw some posting of, of the real thing. Some collectors oh. had had it restored or something like that. And I oh. saw that this is cool. I've never seen uh, that. Yeah. So this is based on the Cooper wagon. Oh. And then the, the back of it is you can see that there is a cargo bay, which is for uh, carrying the... Uh, uh, the leathers and all that. So uh -huh. there is uh, all sorts of variations and and changes from the difference from the uh, uh, this is a civ civilian model versus the uh, the military model. So basically, this is based on uh, Tamiya kit, the one thirty fifth Cooper wagon, and then I dip my hands into uh, conversion. So so this particular project is to exercise. Uh, like to learn a lot more about conversions and things like that, doing uh, some scratch building and things like that. So this is the uh, this is the end result of it. Um, it. And the other thing I want to try it out is the uh, the uh, the paint chipping uh, effect uh, with the with the bare metal showing up at the bottom mm -hmm. and things like that uh, from the. Um, so so this is the two main things that I want to get from this project. How, how did you do your chipping, Ming? Huh? How did you do your chipping, Ming? So I um I basically uh, just scratched them off. Oh, so it's natural metal underneath, and you just uh, you yeah. Know. So okay. so I'll I'll talk about it later later oh, on okay. with, uh, with some okay. pictures, but great, great, basically great. yeah yeah. So my basically my, two layers. Yeah. My second question is 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 why red? Why did they use red? I have no idea why they use red. Um, hmm. It's interesting. It's hard to find uh, reference pictures as well. Okay. There are um, uh, there are just about the few that I ha I have it in here that um, that I work with, uh, but the restore version that they show is is in red. So um, uh, maybe Eric, can you show the comparison pictures? One of the um, the second one from the left. This one. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> this is the real one and the model. Oh. So. Um, 
So the top one is the model, the real one is the back, mm. is in the bottom. Um, so, so these are the modification they did, right? With a towing hook that um, they could potentially have uh, have a little trailer oh. Oh, that uh, that they can they can tow. It has some reflector yeah. light. It has a license plate. So I scratch build the entire license plate with the mount, mm. with the little reflector light there, and um, and uh, you find some uh, decals with the numbers and put the numbers onto the uh, license plate. Nice. So, so this is the back of it. Of course, you see the cargo bay, uh, which is on top of um, of the uh, truck itself. But um, but it's it's sinking in a little bit. So I have to cut um, cut the body down in order to get to that um, that okay. position. Um, next, please. So this is the real end of model again. Right. So this is um, from the same angle, so that we can we can see uh, we can see it. Hmm. Um, so the next one, a different angle, the real and the model. That's cool. I've never yeah. seen that. So, um, and then the, let's go into, so this whole project started, uh, as I was saying, that I saw some nice pictures of the real one, restore one in, in the, on the internet. So can you show the, um, the third one from the left in the second row? Right here? So this whole project started with a piece of paper and high school geometry toolkit. So uh, compass and uh, things like that, rulers and things like that, protractor. So so I first laid out the uh, the template of the cargo bay. Um, so and uh, lay lay it out on paper and then use that as the as a cutting guide for uh, for the uh, for the uh, styrene plastic sheets. Uh, next one, please. So that's the end result of the uh, of the cargo bay. Um, so cut it all into pieces in the right size. Uh, next one. Oh. So that's um, after uh, some nice. drilling, some cutting, and all that. And um, um, so the <laughs> challenging part. One of the challenging part is the corrocation. Coro corrocation. I think corrugated, right? So there are right. little little bars that are standing out, and I have to cut. Uh, cut the uh, um, little plastic uh, strips, each one of them and, and line them up that's and cool. put it in there. Yeah. So scratch building, that's cool. So I, I know that long time ago, there was a CM, CMK uh, resin yeah. kit yeah. for that, but, uh, but I decided to, uh, first of all, it's maybe hard to find right now, but, uh, but I decided to just exercise this. And mm -hmm. like, since it's a, it's a rectangular shape, except for mm -hmm. the top, rooftop, mm -hmm. So it's not overly, overly challenging. So the first one that I do in, in terms of conversion, uh, this seems to be the right level for me to try nice. out. Well, yeah. how did you get the curved roof? That's where the compass comes in. So, oh. so the two walls on the two sides, I, I use a compass to draw an art of a circle mm. and, uh, and then cut out the two walls and then, and then um, cut out the rooftop and then just bend it. Bend it according oh, okay. to that curve. Oh, okay, I get it. Okay. Right. So, yep, yep, yep. Um, so, but, but it has the wall supporting it. Is the front and the back wall supporting it, it? Which is right? which is arced. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, uh, next one, please. So the other the other thing is that the the um, the thing about the kit was that they they molded the the door handles as a one lump. Uh, so it's just a lump of plastic sticking out. Um, so I decided to, um, to, to enhance it. So I actually cut out the lump and then hollow it out and, and glue it back on. So, so I got the handles in here. So it took some very, very delicate cutting. Um, just uh, try to avoid bouncing it off to the carpet and things like that. Uh, so I managed to get that done. It is on the, it's done on the other side as well. And you can see the, 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 the doors in there on the top row is, are the back doors, the rear doors, because the cargo bay is sunken in a little bit. I have to cut the door according to some, some dimension. Um, so, which is also a, a challenging to try to make it straight. Uh, next one, please. Let's see, back to here. Yeah, so. So this is the um, uh, some work in the back. You saw the end product and compare with the real uh, real thing. And this is the uh, bare bone without the paint. So I use some. Uh, there's no no aftermarket kits in here. It's just um, 
sheet uh, styrene and uh, brass pieces of sheets of brass. Uh, little uh, little parts, plastic parts from another kit. I actually use another kit, the Terraria uh, Cooper wagon. Uh, it's not very good kit, but I use it, I salvage it as um, uh, use it for parts. So uh, the tail lights and hair reflectors are from the other Cooper wagon kit. And also the headlights, I actually use the, the, the Terraria kit because they make a mistake, but to my to my advantage. Um, so the headlights, a civilian version, which is not covered, this full glass uh, headlight, whereas the Tamiya one is covered headlight, which only shows a little rectangle showing the headlight. So I say, hey, I'm building a building a civilian version. I take the, I take the Atari <coughs> one and add it to this kit. So you're going to see that uh, later on. Okay, next one, please. Uh, yep. So I first uh, painted it with uh, this is this is Tesla paint. This is enamel. So even though I didn't like the smell of it, um, but I figured that this is this is a small enough model that I I can tolerate. So the reason why I use enamel is that I plan on using the top coat as aquatic. And um, uh, I don't know whether you may remember when I did the when I did the tractor. I actually, like the base coat is aquatic and then the top coat is aquatic and I have to put uh, white glue in the middle as a, as a chipping agent, right? So, because the, uh, when I chipped off the top paint, it will eat into the, uh, the bottom paint. So by using uh, enamel, um, then the enamel will have uh, more staying power when, the, when I do the chipping. So, so I first cover it into, um, into enamel. This is the steel color. Um, this bottle of paint has been there for more than 30 years. It's, it was 99 cents a long time ago. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> pour some uh, thinner into it and then still can use it. So it still looks pretty good. Um, I figured that I didn't want to venture into, I never used the uh, Alkline uh, line of the product, but I, I saw the result, I, it's very good. Uh, but I didn't venture into experimenting with it. I figured that I would better use my uh, 99 cents uh, paint first. And it's small enough that I can paint it. So it, this, these are all hand painted, uh, the, base, uh, the base coat. Works. All right, it looks, uh, it looks okay, yeah. yeah. The next one is, the next one is I, obviously I put in the red and this is a special red that is called Cardinal Red. Um, oh. So I, I find out the composition of it, mix it with a little bit of green, a little bit of blue, um, get to this kind of a tone of a red. And uh, this is the version, um, this is, there are many steps in between already. This is already with the top coat and with some chipping. If you see it, if you see the, wheel cap, the, the wheels and you can already see the, see the chipping. And the chipping is mostly on the underside and the lower part of the body, um, logically, and not on the top of the, uh, uh, of the of the truck. So this is the version that has the top coat in and chipping is done and some uh, some washing and you can see some 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 part of the red are darkened. Mm -hmm. uh, some paint fading fading and all that. This is this is close to like finishing finishing before I put everything together. Now the other thing that I, I did was that I mean I, I, I'm able to do that with uh, the body separate pieces uh, and then glue it at the end because I, I mask off the area that I need to glue with white glue. So some area that I paint over it uh, and then when I come to glue it, I just scrape off the white glue and then I, I will be able to do uh, and then the, the paint is not in the way. So, and for your washes, do you use an acrylic wash or? Uh, aquatic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, and I'm I'm more I'm I'm not doing the big wash like covering the entire model. I yeah. do the uh, only the cracks. Yeah. Uh, so so it runs by itself. Right? I, I I drop put one drop and it just run runs a long way, and it gets a little bit messy. And that's why I need to um I need to touch it up later on. Uh, but uh, but the end result is something like that. I actually use some. I think what you refer to as filtering. Yep, yep. Um, so the the walls get messy. It gets uh, like some of the dark color gets to the area that I don't want it, 
And um, I actually send the same cardinal red, very thin, and then put a very thin layer on top. And slowly that, that dark, uh, it, it blurs the, uh, the dark area and it makes the transition a little bit more natural. You, you hit it right on because your roof there looks really nice. There's a lot of variation happening. Mm -hmm. and, oh, thank and you. I, yeah, it's great. I think a lot of guys find it intimidating, but you need a lot of going on in the color in order to make it interesting, not just one single color. And it, I mean, I mean it. It really looks nice the way you've mm -hmm. got the darkened areas. Thank you. And you're thank layering you. back and forth, right? You're going back and forth. That's the idea. That's the only way to. to right. Do it. So it looks great. It's multiple multiple yeah. passes, right? Yeah. So, so yeah. The, the first pass, I mean, it doesn't look right, then you you do something else to make it up. So something right. like that, right? right? Right. So, okay. So next one. Oh, so this is here. another in, in, another. Oh yeah. So there is another one. I think if you can exit back sure. there, we'll find it. Uh, uh, do you want the side see. of the? Yeah, yeah. This is this this is the interesting one. Um, a good place. Yeah. So. The lettering is, uh, it took some work. Um, the um, one would think that, okay, I would just make a template and then spray on top of it, right? And get the lettering, but it's corrugated. Mm. So it's, <laughs> it's not flat. Um, so I did the template, printed it out on the printer, cut out the paper um, with all the uh, uh, lettering out. And so it's a template and then spray on it. And then once I spray on it, then it blurs out. Like it, it, it goes beyond the boundary. So, so, so it kind of becomes a, a, a blurry, a very blurry leather. Yeah, so, yeah. so I ended up uh, hand painted it uh, to sharpen up the, the, the lines. Yeah. So, so from uh, I, I, I counted it from uh, from creating the template to actually touching up the paint. I spent just about six hours on both sides. <laughs> uh, finishing that, so it's very, uh, very painstaking and a little bit of a uh, tedious what, and what, very steady hands. What, what an enjoyable, relaxing hobby we have. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't. It just. Um, it just very careful. Like I need to be very careful about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and right. that's uh, and and it's on both sides. So, <laughs> so I, I I know I know what you've been through to do that because I've been through it myself. You've got to get the right size, the right scale, right to the pictures. It can't be too big, it can't be too small. It's it's nice. Yeah, and 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 um, when I touch up the paint, I have to mix it in such a way that it looks the same as the rest of the paint that I painted before. Um, so you know that every time you you put in some thinner, maybe there is some slight differences and um so 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 i think i'm i i, I managed to do that um uh fix it up and then at the end i do a, a clear clear code pass a matte clear code um to actually seal it up a little bit uh the other thing that i did uh, maybe you you notice that is that um i intentionally made some dents on the model like the yeah. fenders and things like that and and using that <laughs> as a guideline to highlight the scratches so yeah, here we go. Yeah, that's it, right? The so door and the band and things like that, and different different areas that are easily scratched. And uh, uh, most of the dents are in the lower part of the car, not in the in the cargo bay because that's uh, that's high up, so it's less likely to get dent and scratched. So that was another pass. Is that before I painted, I actually use a knife, uh, use a cutting knife, and scrape off some of the. Uh, um, some of the areas of the plastic and then bend the fender in, in, in a crooked way um, so that it, um, it gets into that, uh, that kind of feeling. Um, I think that's it. I think it, um, it took a long time, uh, not because of, of the complexities of that. I thought this is already quite straightforward conversion. It's just that I have renovation going on. I stopped uh, building this thing, uh, interrupted in the middle of this. I stopped for more than two months uh, before I can Have you posted it to finish Facebook it. yet? I'm sorry? Have you posted it to Facebook yet? Uh, not yet. Um, I'm planning to. Um, yeah, so um, uh, some this sets of pictures, I think it tells the story. Uh, one, more, one more photo, though, actually. Um, uh, Eric, if you go to the black First and white one? picture now, yeah. So the reason this is one of the rare picture of this thing. Uh, it's not exactly like the model that I built or the restore version that I saw, uh, but it indicates that, that the canvas top is lowered down like this. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to cover the the drivers or I mean there was nothing to see if you cover it. 
Mm. Um, so I decided to model uh, uh, model uh, for this version, um, and that is the the canvas roof is lower down, so it goes mm. back to the uh, to the back of the uh, of the driver seat. Mm -hmm. So so that's what I did with the uh, with the, with the model that I have. Very cool. And that's about it. Nice subject. Very nice. Yeah, interesting. It's in red. There's a different kind of red, and yeah, it's very, it's very cool. interesting. I've never seen one. Yeah. Great work, Ming. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then the last one for today, until we hand it over to Harvey, will be uh, by Paul. Hello. Yeah. In uh, 1999 yeah. or something, Polar Lights released um, a reissue of the super rare Aurora Godzilla's go kart called the go kart for copyright reasons at the time. Uh, <laughs> next, Eric. <clears throat> I. I Oh, nice. I did one for um, Heritage Con uh, this year. I um, added a tongue, um, a spark plug wire visor lens, replaced uh, the, um, the roller skate wheels with uh, Barbie doll vintage skateboard wheels. There's <laughs> one problem, and that's the um, steering wheel is in front of his paws rather than under them. Now, I got away with that. At Heritage Con, but when this goes to, um, I'm going to uh, Wonderfest in Louisville, Kentucky, and they know how this kit should be built. Uh, you know, in a Godzilla v Kong diorama. So I tried after the show to fix it next, and I got in a real mess. My uh, the steering, the steering wheel is way too recessed under the paws. You can't see it. And next, I got into a gluey uh, mess. Eric, the, the next oh, back here. got into a mess with uh, Blue trying to get his uh, butt back in the chair. So I thought, oh, why don't I just do the kid over again? So I bought the 21 reissue. That's the next one. This time called Godzilla's Go Kart. And it came with a decal set. I'd never used decals before, but I watched the videos and bought um, um, uh, um all the stuff and i found out the edges uh were visible uh here um i had i what i did with the new i ended up cannibalizing most of the kit that i did before i put so, uh an oil some oil on um the the chain assembly and um i redid all the wheels because i thought they had too many glitches uh next yeah, I got the steering wheel kind of where I wanted it, not quite, but that's the best I could do. Um, I ended up glossing the helmet, which I hadn't done before, and I repainted the parachute pack to match the straps. I didn't have, have it that way before. So next, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can, I mean, the, the it's not perfect, but the steering wheel is visible this time. Um, next. Yeah, I haven't really mastered the digital camera yet. Uh, there's a bit of a gap between his uh, butt and the chair, but I, I think on certain angles I can get away with it. Next. And yeah, and that's it. So that's uh, ready for to go into the diorama. Next thing I did was uh, Polar Lights repop of the Aurora Godzilla. Not something I would enter uh, alone in the contest, but as part of a Godzilla collection. Uh, I, my rotary tool packed up so I couldn't re uh, replicate detail uh, that was lost at the seams. And one thing I didn't do is file down the bottom teeth because they were... Um, oversized like some kind of molding problem but i think i can get away with it and the next thing i did last thing i did uh the next thing the next picture um i repaired a a broken godzilla 55 by billiken unfortunately the dorsal fin uh, plate didn't uh fit properly on one side so the dorsal fins are a bit up so again nothing i'd enter on its own but it's part of a collection and if it's angled just right no one's going to see the problem and then i got modelers burnout while we're working on another godzilla model and i haven't done anything in weeks very nice yeah thank you yeah very cool 
There All right. Thank you, Paul. And that's uh, that's it for the models tonight then that I was sent. So Harvey, if you wanted to uh, okay. take uh, control and show some. Uh, I'm going to show you two things if you guys <clears throat> um, As you know, I'm working on a 1200 Yamato. Mm -hmm. and, um, I'm going to show you two things if we've got the time. We're okay on time, eh, Eric? We're okay? Yeah. We'll, we'll have a discussion after this on something. I'll... I'll I'll mention, but in a moment, let me just share. The first set I'm going to talk about is the um, the museum, the Japanese Naval Museum uh, in Kire in Japan. Um, it's just outside of uh, Hiroshima by about an hour. And uh, one of the inspirations for me working on this model is the um, model of the Yamato they have at the Japanese um, Naval Museum uh, in Kire. So I'm going to show you that. Um, everybody see that? No, not yet. Yep, yeah, I can see it. Is it over four feet long? No, this one is in this the one, museum, this right? One, this one is yeah, huge. This one is huge. This one is in the main um, exhibition hall of right. Kyure Naval Museum uh, outside of Hiroshima. Uh, Hiroshima. It, it is a one-tenth scale um, model in Yamato that was built by a group of modelers in Japan, I think about 15 years ago and they they went to every length to make sure that she was accurate down to the, the blueprints now the one thing that should be said is that not much remains of the research of this ship there are some general blueprints on the rough shape of the ship but there are no photos of the details of this ship none because when she was built it was very much a classified project um, and that's the, the reason why there isn't much on it. So if you have books on the Yamato, and there are uh, quite a number of good ones, there's a brand new one, um, Anatomy of a Ship, just updated theirs. Be aware, though, that a lot of these are hypothetical drawings because no detailed shots exist of this ship or her sister Musashi. These are just, um, again, one-tenth scale. It's, it's really, to give you a sense of the scale, these are lights. And these are kind of like pillars where you can sit. So you'll see a couple of people on the phone. This thing is massive. Um, and again, it's, it's considered to be the most accurate Yamato um, out there. So you can see there's a guy standing looking at it. There's a lady taking a picture. The thing is absolutely huge. Quite impressive. What was it made of? Um, I believe it's made out of plywood. Oh, really? Okay. Formers, yeah. Um, my, you know, I, I think it's fantastic. But as you'll see later, my only criticism is... Um, the figures are not, not really as good as the model itself. So like if you're building armor and you want to add figures, make sure your figures are, are really good. And, and my only criticism, I thought the figures on the ship were rather amateurish, but the model itself is absolutely gorgeous. That gives you a sense of the... Now, this is her refit when she was sunk. Um, she had all these, these armaments. It's quite an impressive ship, mm -hmm. right? Just to give you a sense of the... There, see, the figures are meh. They're okay. Um, <laughs> Given that the model is scratch built, I thought they could have done a much better job with the with the figures. But hey, who am I to say, right? Um, there's the um, those are the actual markings. So they did their homework of the peats. By the way, if you do build a Yamato, um, she never had any jakes. She only flew peats. Even though most Yamato kits come with a, a jake float plane, she never had them. So only Masashi had them. Yamato did not. That's me looking up, taking a picture. That's how, <laughs> that's how big this thing is, right? Cool. Yeah, it's big. Impressive. It's impressive, yeah. That's just a model of the gun inside. Isn't one. it the uh, Takam came out with this, like yes. just the turret itself? Yes, yes, it's massive. It's huge. Yes. I think it's, uh, they did one in 70 second scale. Now, these are, the, they when they found her, these are some of the... Uh, salvaging that they brought up from now i just thought this is interesting that's that's the uh, tiles that they used inside the ship probably in one wow that's thick yeah yeah and these are some of the things they found on the ship right some of the metal some of the that's um some sort of bullhorn or some sort of listening device i'm not quite sure mm -hmm. <laughs> bottles right this is um the museum shop like anything in japan they overdo everything <laughs> um, and it, of course, want to buy a Yamato kit, go to the museum store. And to give you a sense, this is the, where we are here. This is a 1-600 Yamato. Um, it's, a, it's, that's 
that's a that's about two thousand yen, which is like twenty bucks U.S. Twenty bucks, yeah, it's it's actually reasonable, actually. Very reasonable oh, over there. Yeah. To make them, yeah. I mean, this one here is a full haul um, Yamato, which I believe I've seen in stores over here going for like seventy, eighty dollars. It's thirty bucks over there. Mm -hmm. the, this is what I mean by they overdo everything over there. But it's kind of rare. Like museum shops tend to be overpriced, but. They this do. one is not. They do. So I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm just gonna stop share and then just show a bit of my model and just reopen this. Everyone see that? Not yet. Nope. There it is. Uh, here you go. Yeah. Okay. You got it. Now? <laughs> so that's a four feet one, right? More yeah, that's, feet, that's about four and a, and a half something and change. Yeah. Um, and I'm now. Some of you have seen this photo from last month, so I'll be quick on these. That's that's this kind of gives you the sense of the size of the model. It was mailed to me from fine scale. They mailed it. It must have cost them a fortune because when I checked the box, the weight of this thing is about 23 pounds. That's that's wow. how heavy this kit is. <laughs> and the part of yeah. it is like it's there are mini kits within themselves. That's the packaging. It's essentially, although it's an MRC, it's not MRC to me, it's MRC gallery, which is essentially trumpeter. It's a trumpeter kit. Oh, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the instruction book. It's about 110 pages. <laughs> it's thick. It's if you really want to go to town on this thing and do every detail and sand and finish it for a competition, it's it's easily going to take you well over a year or more. Easily, if you right. work on it every day. Plan the show two years after. Oh God, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm about a month and a half into this project, and I'll show you where I am. This kind of like examples of the, and, and again it. it it, it, for those of you that are into ships, they give you alternate parts, although they don't tell you. You can actually model uh, many of its refits, um, but you have to do your research. So, And I'm doing a 1944 refit, and I'll show you the paint scheme. There comes with about 15, oh my God. <laughs> 15 or 16 frets of photo etch. So if you don't like photo etch, don't buy this kit because there's a lot. <laughs> The photo watch engineering wow. is superb. I think some of the details are too small, way too small. And I didn't use maybe a tenth of them. But the ones that were there, the engineering is fabulous. Things really fit well on that. That's the model out of the box. It weighs 23 pounds because you've got these heavy metal brackets. This came like basically in the box. And so the brackets have screws. You screw them in and then you apply glue. It's a, so it comes assembled like that. It's mm -hmm. big. It's big. That is my Fuso, which I my, <laughs> I scratch built that thing for fine scale for one of my first articles in fine scale way back in in, in I think the late nineties. Oh. And this one is also my well, I've done a few articles for fine scale, but this is my second Japanese ship for fine scale. Look at the size difference: one seven hundred, and this is one two hundred. So that's what it looks like, kind of semi built. It's big. Mm -hmm. that's what it looks like in my model room i have a small model because i'm mostly a 70 second guy although i got this b17 over here which has been a shelf queen for a while that i'll one day i'll show that that's a b17d in 48 skill um now the only big problem if you're going to buy this kit guys is the uh hull you see it's kind of hard in this the, the hull um uh detail is way overdone it's way way overdone there are some pictures of Yamato that show it was very smooth. So I literally sanded off everything with this. I had to go to crappy tire and get all this heavy sanding blocks and sanded it all off um, because it was very, very um, obvious if you would build it. As, uh, it was the major problem with this kit in terms of accuracy. Engineering, it was pretty good, but I had to use this clamp here because this left side of the deck was not a great fit. But everything else is actually pretty good. It's a pretty good mm -hmm. fit. That's how far I've got now. I think about wow. a month and a half. That's the that's fully done. That that's the obviously the bridge and conning tower. There's about 12 stories to this thing. The thing's probably around maybe four inches in height. And I lost count, but there's a probably around 130 parts just to this. Yep. I can see the details over there, all the photo edges and yeah. everything. It looks yeah. impress impressive just by itself. Yeah, yeah, that's it. it's got these little finicky things. You 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 mm. you need a you need a steady hand, really. There's no other. Right. You have to um, the radar. I have to modify it because it wasn't right. So I just added my, uh, a few of my own different photo etch there. But 
that kind of gives you, that's the rear view of the bridge, right? And now they do know the details of this because they've dived on her and they got the dimensions from the wreck where they could. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty accurate model in that respect. Well, that's what the main superstructure. So I've, this was probably one of the hardest things I've ever built because all of the lattice work is basically fine photo etch. Um, and you can't, you, you get, you got to glue the points together. It's not, it's definitely not for modelers are 14 and over. No, it's, <laughs> it's not, it's, it's a brutally hard kit to do in terms of photo etch. So you better have your patience. Um, that's a close up of the lattice work and the radar. Like it's crazy, crazy detailed, really crazy. You've got all this uh, walk, what are these railings here on, on the funnel? They fit very well, but again, it's it's not for for the novice modeler. You, you'd better love mm -hmm. Japanese ships, and you better love photo etch. This is uh, the version I'm doing. Now, a test. Does anybody notice something different about the coloring of of the Yamato in this photo? Anybody? Yeah. Look hard. It's no one's ever modeled the Yamato in this color scheme, but it's wow. clearly in this picture. Was it camo? Yeah, camo. Camo. Mm -hmm. Black. black and it's got it's black on the deck wow. and mm. there's some black here it's now there are records of her from crew surviving crew members that said sh they took the soot from the funnel then mixed it with some gray paint and they applied it to uh the most mm. of the front um turret and the deck okay and they used it as camouflage when she was going through the surigao straits uh, on her way to lady golf and so there's, there's been a lot of research I've had to do um, to make sure that they get the right paint scheme of this. I don't know why nobody's ever done this scheme. All you ever see of Yamato is gray, but no, uh, in 44, she had black camouflage, probably applied to her superstructure. So I think it's gonna look quite, uh, quite different. And that's just kind of on the way to painting. I know this looks really crap, but it's my attempt at um, pre-modulating. I'm gonna blend it with the airbrush more, but essentially, um, I haven't took pictures of it, but the hull's pretty well painted. Um, it's probably now about three quarters done. I will try to finish this thing. And if I can do it, I'll try to do it in two months uh, because I, I really have a deadline for this thing. And these are the colors mm -hmm. I, I used. Um, kind of like what, what Ming, you were saying with your Kubelwag and you just throw a bit different colors on, mix them with the airbrush and see what comes of it. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm doing right now. Nice. Nice.